Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Langlois, chef at Homeless House Estate and Gardens, and this is Michelle Newman. And thank y'all so much for tuning in. And Michelle, what do we what do we got going on today? What are we making? You know, we're gonna make rugula. Now, I'm just a I'm just a Louisiana Cajun boy, so I'd never heard of rugula until you came to visit us at Homeless House a couple days ago. So, but I did wind up making some. Had so much fun. But can tell us all about it. All right, well, first of all, don't give me I'm a poor old country boy because you didn't just fall off the tomato truck. <laughs> I know that routine. These are rugula, and rugula is a Jewish pastry from Eastern Europe, and um, it is a pastry that is used in many Jewish households for the Sabbath, holidays, the high holidays. And Jeremy, I'm, I'm sure you know this, but a lot of the Jewish settlers in, in Louisiana were, were from this area, and they were very successful retail merchants, and they settled in this area. They owned the dry goods stores, and I can assure Donaldsonville. you, Donaldsonville, they mm -hmm. even have a Jewish cemetery there, and I can assure you, at holiday time, you would find these rugelach on their table. It's a European pastry. So what we do is we're going to start out making our dough. Yeah, so we're going to make some dough. So this is what I got going on here. So this is a very much a butter-based dough. So we're starting off right here with a half a pound of butter. This is called the cardiologist special. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we, we keep them in business. And so it's butter, but what makes this, this dough unique is we're going to add both some <coughs> cream cheese and we're gonna put, I'm gonna start blending this up first just to get these two kind of softened and mixed together. Exactly. You want you want to have both of these ingredients softened, right? Correct. So, so I pulled I pulled the, the pulled them both out several hours before we got got going. It just makes life easier. And then we're just gonna add to that. Uh, this is sour cream, and again, this is what makes this what just it's what doing this. Rich. Yeah, and it, what and it's so unique too. And what I really enjoyed about it was this, and also. What's neat about it too, uh, now we're gonna, oh, actually, no, I'm going backwards. I'm gonna, just, you know, like all baking that we do, you always wanna add just a little bit of salt. It's gonna give any of your, any of your doughs or even kicks have salt in it. It's gonna give it just everything, just a little more of a flavor pop. This is just a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna put that in there. Now, sometimes what I do, there are two ways of doing this. If you're watching your sugar level, of course you shouldn't be eating this, but if you're watching your sugar level, you don't have to add sugar. I usually will add one or two tablespoons of sugar because I like sweet things. Well, you know what I But you don't have to. Sure, and you know what I found really neat about this recipe? Adding a cup of flour, and now now that's when all this, as that starts to mix, it's all gonna start together. But you know what I found so interesting about this recipe and, and how it's kind of different is, you see that, yes, you can add some sugar in here, but there's no sugar in this because we're actually gonna get our sweetness from our filling. So when you eat the cookie, you get this nice contrast between the savoriness and the saltiness of the pastry and then that sweetness inside. So They're that, addictive, Jeremy. I, they should come with a warning sign. <laughs> there you go. And then look, look how easy this comes together. Get this off. But so one thing that's super important whenever you're making this recipe is because it is a butter dough made mostly with butter as your base, you're going to notice that this dough right now is really sticky and really soft. Right. So at, at this point, what we want to do is dump this, this dough onto a, a, a plastic sheet, just like we have here, wrap it up, form it into a ball, and then you want to at least refrigerate that for about four hours overnight is actually better if you're able to manage that. And that's exactly what we did here. We've wrapped our dough in the saran wrap, and now I have a floured board. And Jeremy, we're going to uh, flour this board, flour your rolling pin. It's a little, You want to keep it in the fridge almost until you're ready to use it, and then you're going to roll it out into a circle okay right just yeah like the reason you want this to stay as cool as possible is because because it is there's so much butter in this dough so if you, you take it out too early well that butter inside of it is just going to start to soften so and then it just the dough itself it, it, it'll be almost impossible to roll out so but by having it nice and cool it makes it really simple to work with and what i do is i flip it occasionally and I also flour my board, and I make a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Well, good, because... You're doing great. I like to, I, I call well, this rustic looking. <laughs> but yeah, so we just got to roll it out. About how thick should we roll it out to, Michelle? I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch About a quarter or so. of an inch, perfect. About okay. like so? I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some apricot preserves, glaze, or fruit spread, we put a little bit of water in it, and we also dilu we diluted it with some water, and we heated it because it will get more yeah, yeah, watery literally. by doing literally that. Literally just took some apricot right out of here and, and did that. Heated you don't it want it real solid. And we're going to brush it. We're going to keep about a one-inch border, and we're going to brush it in the center. 
this is going to help the, the filling adhere. And how, so, mu how much should I put on here, Michelle? Just a nice coating. Don't be overly generous. Just a thin coating. That looks really good, Jeremy. Okay, and now I'm going to hand you all the filling ingredients. All right, so look, simple ingredients, y'all. This is what we got. We got some sugar. We're going to go in here. We have raisins. Now, do you have a preference as of golden raisins, dark raisins? You know, either I'd, like to, I'd like to mix them. You can go sure. either way. If you don't have the golden raisins in the pantry, you can use the brown raisins. It doesn't really matter. Well, I, I do have a very important question for you, Michelle. What do you call this right here? Pecans. Oh, thank God you said that. Thank God you said that, y'all. Because this is not a pecan. A pecan is something you use to hold up a broken bed. This is not a pecan. <laughs> Right? It's a pecan. I said it right? Do I? Oh, yeah, yeah. You you got Louisiana points right there. Okay, I got a certificate. And All so right. now, now we're just going to kind of mix this up. And again, simple ingredients. We got sugar, cinnamon, some pecans. You could use walnuts. You could use walnuts. Exactly. Sure. Okay. And then remember, in Europe, they're not going to be using pecans in Germany. You know, when I said Eastern Europe, this would be from the Ukraine, from Russia, from Germany, mm -hmm. from the Czech Republic, from Poland. That's the origin of this food. And the settlers in Donaldsonville, that's where they were from. So wherever people move, as you know, they bring their recipes and their food waste with them. So do we have the cinnamon in here? Yeah, Let's put yeah. a little more. A little more cinnamon? Yeah. Sure thing. OK, good. And I'm going to pull a little bit of the sugar out, because we're going to need that with the cinnamon to top it. we got more here. Look, look, oh, that look, sugar? Look, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. All right, here we go. So you're going to sprinkle. And you're going to try to stay within the area that you've already brushed Brush that your apricot. apricot preserves on. Okay. It's almost like we're making a dessert pizza right now. Yeah. Because we're about to cut it as it, well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to let you do your thing. So yeah. So now we're just going to take and cut it. Now when I cut it, you tell me if I'm cutting it the right size because I quarter it and then I cut this into thirds after I quarter it. Delicately. Delicately. Good so far? It's a delicate flower. Yes. About, about that size? Is that yes. a good size? That's a perfect size. All right. So actually, I'm going to cut this into fours. Okay. So I'm going to start rolling one and showing you how to roll it because it's go. really, mm -hmm. you have to roll it in a specific way. Okay. Here, I'll tell you what, I'm going to push some of these over to you okay. and then I'll cut so, these. So when you roll it, you start at the fat side, yes. the base of the triangle. Think of, and if you see an area that's missing a little bit, you could just kind of fake it and push a little bit of the ingredients on there. Okay, so what I'm doing now is you start at the fat side and you are going to roll it very carefully, very gently, slowly. Voila. Look at these little tasty morsels. Put them on your baking sheet. Perfect. And then one thing, just another tip I found, if you put, so you get this little tip at the bottom Correct. Right there. I actually like to put that on the bottom part. Because I find it helps them keep them from unrolling. Exactly. While, it keeps it sealed. Yeah. And these are just bites of deliciousness. Yeah. And like I said, it's going to have, when these bake up, they have that really great contrast to that rich, buttery, buttery dough with that sour cream and that cream cheese, which that right there makes the, the dough itself extremely unique. And then, and then you contrast that with that, that apricot and that cinnamon and that sugar and, and the and the raisins and the nuts that are inside, it really makes for an interesting, like you said, a little bite. A bite full of delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other varieties which I don't do. You can also use raspberry preserves. You can also use chocolate chips. I, this is the traditional recipe that I'm sharing with you today. And we're also going to uh, include the recipe. Perfect. And then, Michelle's Ruggala. And okay. then what should we preheat our oven to? Um, you could either bake these at 350 or 375. What you're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to brush the tops. When you see it's golden, that's when you take it out. It depends on your oven. You could bake it for 20 minutes. You could bake it for half an hour. At the midway point, you know, open the oven, take your cookie sheet out, and turn it around so all the sides are baked evenly. All right, yeah, yeah. And, and, yes, and now this we're is going to put an egg just, wash. Just, just, just crack an egg. Now, you can, I've seen other recipes where they either use a little milk or a little of this, but what I really like, a, do you have a preference? I like egg because I like how the egg kind of goldens up on top Yes, of it, it makes it nice and cool. Yeah. And the tips, don't forget. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Don't let me be. Don't no. ca you caught me slipping. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we have our oven set to 350 degrees. We're just going to paint these real quick. 
And I see you already sprinkled a little sugar on top. Is that right? Right. But I'm going to put some more because it's a cinnamon sugar mixture. So I have some cinnamon here. I have some cinnamon here. I'm going to add a little more sugar. And basically what I'm going to do is just go sprinkle, sprinkle. And the smell, the aroma when it's cooking is heavenly. Now I'm guessing this is something that you, I'm sure, grew up on, right? Oh my gosh, yes. And all the Jewish bakeries in New York and Miami Beach. This is a mainstay, absolutely. Well, there gonna, you go. And I'm going to pop these in our 350 degree oven right here. And then of course, we had some already started. So that's what they're going to look like when they, they come out. Now, what, now a couple things I want to show you. Be careful, that's hot. Now, a uh, couple things, I I, I, a couple tips when you're baking these at home that I found, Michelle, is because some of that, you know what I really love is a little bit of that apricot will actually leak mm -hmm. out and then it becomes like candy yeah, yeah, like on the bottom too. of the pan. But you want to pull these out of the oven, but you want to let them cool. And then within about five to ten minutes of them cooling a little bit, you actually want to remove them off this pan because what I found is that sugar will start to harden if they cool all the way and then the rug will get stuck to the bottom of the pan and they're hard to get off. I'm sure you just rip them off. Oh, I do rip them and I eat the sugar too. <laughs> but there you go. And then, you know, we got some presented right here on a little platter. And you're right. These make a great little bite. If you've never tried this recipe at all at before, I would highly re rec recommend that you do so. Michelle, thank you. I had so much fun learning about these. I, I really did have a blast making these. And thank you so much for coming to Home with us. It's always great to be with you all here. Mm -hmm. Well, thank y'all, and we'll see y'all later. Bye for now.